its face was on the outside of the door, and its butt was like wriggling on the inside of our oh house. Why? What does pasta have to do with it? Lavender Town Syndrome. Lavender Town Syndrome. This has never happened in Story Dive history. Mm, ladies and gentlemen, everyone, what? Oh, sorry, I <clears throat> scared my throat. <laughs> okay, is this go. how we start our episodes now? Uh, <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the party. <laughs> I just Sigma mail the crap out of this opening. Welcome to Story Dive. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not very sick. That's more like Creeper <laughs> mail oh, hey. vibes. Creeper, though. You know Creeper is, is Jeepers. Okay, you know, okay you, you, wait. You're Welcome. Fast. <laughs> We're moving way too fast. Back up the train a little bit. Back, back. Yeah, all right. And we got a back it up. conductor. Back it up a little. Back it up. Just Stop back it up. Stop the train. We're two Sigma back okay. here. Welcome, everyone. We're two Sigma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, here we go. Story dive. Okay, this yeah, is You're over. here. Let's start over. Okay. Hi. So, um, hi. I'm Kai. Wait, we messed it up. Um, I'm you start- I'm Kai. The name's Kai. Sigma Kai for those Sigmas out there. This is my alpha male co-host for today. He ain't no Sigma yet, but we might graduate him up to that status, depending on how this goes. Uh, Logan. I'm the only alpha you need, but they call me Beta. Whatever that means. <laughs> it's the alpha that Story Dive doesn't need, but he's the alpha I'm, they deserve. I'm the open beta on Steam. Get your Ooh, early access now. The open beta mail. Put me that on the sounds... wish list if you want. <laughs> His phone number is the Bro, this, sell all of your data. Just this intro data. Is, it has gone way off the rails. Well, it's it's actually par for the course, uh, at least in order of our topic today. For those who aren't uh, familiar with Story Dive, we you have been talking with a lot of things story related, just kind of diving in, figuring out what makes them tick, what are they, that kind of stuff. Um, we've been kind of going into different elements of stories or different kind of creatures or, or communities, et cetera, et cetera. We've done covered things from like cryptids to ninjas. Uh, in our most recent episode. So we're covering all this kinds of stuff lately. It's going to be pretty cool what we're doing today. Um, we have a host and then we have a not host. The not host usually participates in the game while the host hosts the game. Hi, I'm the so, not host. <laughs> he's the not host, the beta not host. Anyway, so before we get into that story uh, or what the topic is today, um, you got any fun stories? Because if you don't, I have a quick one. Uh, we're kind of sort of doing away with the uh, story of the week thing, Do you making it fun stories. Um, I mean, uh, the yo-yo guy is still going. That that's cool, uh, dude. The yo-yo guy, <laughs> he is still going. In fact, the other day, I think he was using a new yo-yo. Um, I don't know how it works. Yeah. Because honestly, I don't think I think yo-yos and strings are like separate. Um. But yeah, I just uh, just a quick up, update on him. Uh, he's still he's still at it. <laughs> so Yo Yo Man is still Yo Yo, and he's still that's the pretty goat, pretty neat. greatest. Yeah. Um. But no, no nothing nothing crazy. I to think. I don't know. It was the day Saturday the thirteenth? <laughs> uh, kind of an ominous day in April. My wife and I were at the door. About to do laundry like any other day. Oh, man. We open the door. My wife forgets her blanket. So, as she's stepping back to go get her blanket, I look at the door and behold, I see a snake in our doorway. Oh, my God. A nice little danger noodle in our door. Uh, I, at the time, your boy guy was a little too tired to actually react in any kind of way other than <laughs> oh, snake. That was like my genuine reaction was, like, oh. and uh, what's this little guy doing? Here? Yeah, the wife flipped out a little. 
which is fine. That's uh, honestly a fair reaction. <laughs> it's like she was like having to react for you too, because like you just yeah. given it anything. <laughs> she had to compensate for my lack of stock. <laughs> yeah. So I closed the door on it because I'm just kind of like, well, if I just shut the door, like we can rationally think about this problem. What I didn't account for was that it was up against our door when I opened it. So it kind of like brawled out. So when I shut the door, it oh. was like stuck underneath the door. Oh. So it's, it's face was on the outside of the door and its butt was like wriggling on the inside of our oh house. My. And so, yeah, there was more freaking out, mostly on my wife's part and not mine. And so I, I found a dustpan and I sweeped it up into a dustpan and it was like, nice, I have a snake in a dustpan. Wow. What do I do with it? Like, what if, you know, what, what, where do I go from here? So I take it up the stairs. I, I pretty much determined I would either throw it or kill it. Just to do. I'm not going to put it in the lawn that's like in feet away from me, only for it to return to my doorstep. Right. So we take it out. And as I'm going up the stairs, I look to my left and lo and behold, on the stairway is another snake. No way, dude. No <laughs> so way. Snake sitting over like in our stairway. So anyway, we took care of the snakes. Long story short, uh, we we did end up killing one of them, which is kind of sad. But you do what you got to do. But yeah, there were two two snakes in my in my doorway. Dude, freaking would okay. Would you say that a snake is kind of like a scary looking noodle? I would say it's kind of. Uh, these are my wife's words specifically. It's that snakes are very creepy. The way they move is very creepy. Yeah. Which segues, which I learned actually how to spell segue, and it's not at all <laughs> how I thought it was supposed to be spelled. But this is a great segue into our topic today, which is the creepiest of pastas. Bro, dude, yeah, they it is creepy. Snakes is it is it possible slithery. that we get some sort of like? How would you, what is the noise that a creepy pasta would make? Like uh, outside of the actual uh, story of a creepy pasta, I'm just picturing the sloppy wetness of like spaghetti noodles. Yeah, like that's mixed what I was with too. like jump scare <laughs> ominous yeah, noises. That's what I was thinking. It's like it's like spaghetti noodles being mixed with like an eerie like violin or something. <laughs> I, I wanna I wanna put that noise if we can figure out how to. How we would even do that? I would love to put that noise somewhere in here. Just the yes. sloppy. Here's our wetness. our sloppy seconds of creepiness. Wait, I don't know why I paused because you, it's in it, in post. So <laughs> <laughs> I like paused for it, like it was happening right now. Um. <laughs> I'm playing a game here. We're playing Who Creeped in Your Pasta. Um, for those who don't know what a creepy pasta is, it's back in the years of the early internet. I would honestly say probably around 2006 to 2008 ish was where it really started to take off. There was a series of basically just digitally written spooky stories. Uh, very, very horrible based um often were at least from the research that i've been doing very violent violent and dark which is fine because it's horror right but this took the internet by storm and i actually learned creepy pasta is a mix of the words copy and paste but for horror so a, oh. a copy paste is a a story of similar like just an online story that people would type out and send. A creepy pasta yeah. is just the evolution of that into the horror genre. Well, so but, but, you know, what does pasta have to do with it? <laughs> like, so it comes it. from it comes from copy paste, but creepy pasta is just this thing that sounds like a copy paste. I don't right. know. Okay. I'm, okay, I'm doing my best here. Creepy pasta. So it's like copy paste. Copy pasta, but <laughs> with a scare. Because it's a copy of pasta with a pesto, scare. This becomes a, a creepy a pasta. Beep, beep. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> um, 
Okay. You catch yeah, that, trip, that's so. interesting. It's weird how like uh, for some reason I never I just accepted the term at this point. I never really thought about where the name came from. So that's interesting. Right, right. Which uh, to to let you know, Kai, I don't really know anything about creepy pasta. Like excellent. This will I, be awesome then. I'm like, so excited. I think I've heard of like a couple, you know, of creepy pastas or something. Um, which is kind of just like these like stories on the internet that are like kind of creepy but like i really don't know a lot like if anything if anything i know like maybe the most well-known ones uh but i can't even say them off the top of my head so i'm i'm okay okay i'm your oyster bro i don't know nothing excellent well in that vein i will explain to you now how who creeped in your pasta works and viewers please play along i really want to see what people's scores are in this i spent an abhorrent amount of time reading creepy pastas this week <laughs> dude i need <laughs> to get the i need to win it all dude i can't let our viewers outdo me i'm the creepy exactly. pasta guy you know <laughs> even though you've said just <laughs> now you... yeah i've seen like zero <laughs> i don't know i just feel like so, the pressure now i i feel like i'm competing here's how who creeped in your pasta works i am going to give you it's much like who's that pokemon I'm going to give you a silhouette of a creepy pasta, oh, and you are going to uh, cue video screen here, like, right? Uh, you're going to see that, and the viewers are going to see that. I'm going to give you four options, like a multiple choice question thing. Okay. And you have to choose of those four which one this is, and then we'll talk about the creepy pasta for a minute. But then we got to move on to the next okay. ones and stuff. Okay. Sounds good. Sound good. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. There are eight creepy pastas that I've selected here at this time. Now, in the previous videos, uh, there has been talk of uh, Logan winning our cryptid episode. Yes, and I there were need justice, bro. I won. What did I win? So you have won in this episode in this game. You get a free point. So you get one what? of these. You can, it's like a mulligan. So you can oh. kind of, if you see a silhouette and you're like, dude, I got nothing and it's down <laughs> to the wire, you can pull out this, this, this mulligan and I will give you the point. I'll just tell okay. you what it is. All right. One out of the eight. So I get one point if for each you round. you can. Yes. So is it eight it, points it, total? Yeah. There's eight possible okay. points. And in standard uh, story dive fashion, all you have to do is be in the positive. So you have to get four of the eight correct. Okay. And then, um, uh, what? Actually, I would say five of eight. <laughs> not, not, with, not with the mulligan. <laughs> not to, not to move too quickly, but uh, what do I win for winning this? So, if you win, this has never happened in uh, story dive history for the first time ever. You will be able to pick my topic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're just kind of we're going uh, the other way around, dude. That's actually really exciting. I was meta. It's never been done before. Clearly, we've never done that before in the well, history yeah, of story I've, dive. It is true. I've never picked your topic before. So <laughs> that's that's how it's gonna go. Okay. I the pressure is playing really for. I gotta win this, bro. Okay. Let's get started. First. Who creeped in your pasta, candidate number one? Ready? Bow. Oh, man, bro. All right. Bro, it's got to be Slender Man. Here are the four options. Is it A, Siren Head? Siren Head? Oh. Is it B, The Wraith? The Wraith? Rake, as in like the oh, garden rake. tool, the rake. I see, I see. Is it C, Slender Man? Or is it D, Richard Graymore? Dude, this one's way too easy. It can't be Siren Head, because look at his head. It's not a siren. It's got to be Slender Man. Um, wait, what was the last one? Wait, say the last Richard one. Richard Graymore. Richard Graymore. Okay. It could be Richard Graymore, because I don't know who he is. And he does sound like someone who would wear a suit. But someone else who wears a suit is Slender Man, and he has a similar looking head to this one. So I'm locking in Slender Man. I think you gave me an easy one for the first round. That's that's it. That's my answer. All right. You are correct. It is Slender Man. That was the easy one. I will reveal it here. 
it, what if he was just black normally? Slenderman. <laughs> nice, bro. Nice. I wasn't expecting the hand, but uh, yeah, I it totally felt like Slenderman when I went. Yeah, the I I was looking for a lot of the other images. His silhouette is so clear with like the shadowy tentacles right, things coming yeah. out of him. No, that was a good call. So I had. I was trying to find one without those tentacles, and and that's that's what we got. So, Dude, that was yes, good. this is Slenderman. I feel like this is honestly one of the more well known creepy pastas. If you're not familiar with the story of Slenderman, the basic gist of it is he's some sort of creature, person, cryptid looking dude, very tall, lanky dude, um, and he abducts people, mostly children, for some reason. Uh, he kind of turned into like a bedtime story boogeyman kind uh, of myth. Dude, why is it always children, um, man? Leave them out of this. It's because, yeah, that's a good, good <laughs> point. I, I do. So I do have something on Slenderman later that actually oh, has to do with okay. partially the Cause... fall of Creepypasta. Because it, it did fall off. It did definitely yeah, fall I off. Don't, I don't hear about it nearly as much. There's definitely a reason for it. I don't hear about it nearly there's as much. There's definitely some. Do. Yeah, there's there's reasons for it, and I'll get into it a little bit later. But we're playing the game now, and I I want to play the game, and and then I'll talk yeah, about sure. that. No, that it, it is kind of heavier, and you know, want to do the proper tone. Okay, okay. Um, so you have. Oh, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say that Slenderman's always been one of the most interesting. Uh, like, I don't want to say like wh whether it's a cryptid, whether it's a SCP, whether it's a creepy pasta, like in that realm. Out of all that stuff, he has been one of the most interesting to me. But because I don't really actually know anything about him, like the stuff that you said about him, like abducting people, like I don't even know about that. Because it's like in the game, you just find him in the woods, and when you look at him, you know your screen goes all staticky. Um, but like I don't know what that means, and I don't know his deal. You know, so I, I would be, I am really curious about when we get to that. He's a very interesting. Oh, character. you know, what's interesting. The origin of him, uh, Slender Man is a long, lanky humanoid with tentacles. Yeah. No face, a black suit. He was first created or is believed to be first created in 2009 in a Photoshop contest. Oh, interesting. That's, that's wild. Photoshop contest. And so, yeah, the, the, the image of the original Photoshop contest went super viral, and that's kind of starting where the kind of myth of Slenderman became much more than just like an image. And then obviously the game was created yes, off the, of it, and the, the eventually is, the movie. The game is what everybody knows him for, I think. Like where it's it, it's at least where his popularity came from. So, right, okay. right. So, so that's one point for me. I'm ready for the next. That round. is one point. Okay, enter creeped in your pasta second candidate. What I am. Oh man, dude. I... What is that? Uh, okay, you got to give me the options. I have no idea. Okay, here are the options. Is it A, Rudy? Rudy? Is it B, Woody? As in, like, like you know. Like the like the cowboy, the Rootin' Tootin' guy? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, Woody. Is it B, Jeff the Killer? Jeff the Killer. Is it C, Crash Bandicoot? <laughs> or is it D, Billy the Kid? Billy the Kid. Oh, man. Why do I want to say Crash Bandicoot so bad? Dude, there, there's no way, right? There's no way it's Crash Bandicoot, right? Uh, who is, so you said Billy the Kid? Yeah, Billy the Kid. Oh, I will give you uh, two hints for the whole game. Because you gave me two hints, and that was fair. So. Oh, okay. I see. Um, I, and I, I can scratch off one of the, so if you ask for a hint, I will scratch off one of the. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, I see. Choices, so you only have three to choose from. Like, who wants to be a millionaire? Okay, let's see. Let me, so what was it, the Jeff one? Jeff the Jeff? Jeff the Killer. Jeff the Killer and Billy the Kid. Um and the first one was Woody. I don't what? Dude, what are these options? Okay, I need a hint. I, I have no idea. Okay, so it is definitely not Crash Bandicoot. Okay. Because I was actually considering that, which is crazy. Um I think it could be all three of these. This is literally just like a guess in the dark for me. 
I don't think it would be Billy the Kid because he used to be a cowboy, at least as far as I know. Um, I'm going to go with Jeff the Killer. Okay, you're I'm, locking it in? I'm locking it in. Okay, let me just write that down. Oh, he's going to creep in my okay. fucking pastrami linguini, bro. <laughs> pastrami linguini. Okay, this is... In fact, Jeff the Killer. Woo, dude, no way. I actually, I've never seen this. this that, that's pretty creepy. Um, yeah, it is. This is Jeff the Killer. Um, it, it, so before anyone starts freaking out, I'm just going to like build attention here. Nip it in the bud. This image is not of a real person. It's just, it's actually an image of uh photoshopped michael jackson face oh, no with way. like dolphin features put on it so oh yeah. man wait okay uh i really want to know the deal behind this but uh okay if you want to save it for later we can no no I, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about this story here so jeff the killer is actually the most i think it is the most well-known creepypasta mm, of them all okay it is the most i think it it also is like a. There's so many sub stories of Jeff the Killer that it's almost become its own like franchise kind of right, okay. weird free creepy pasta franchise. I feel like I should know so, him, but I don't. I, I've I bet you've at least seen this image at least once before. Most people that will see this will kind of get because I've I've seen this image before. Maybe how old is this? Like how when did when did he become a thing? Uh, let's see, Jeff the Killer. August 12th, 2012. Okay. So, I mean, there's a good chance that I saw it, but I definitely have no memory of it. Right, right. Well, so Jeff the Killer, the kind of quick synopsis of him is a 13 year old kid who gets bullied. Um, he and his brother defend themselves from the bullies, and the bullies threaten him with knives. Uh, I can't remember if the knives are super important or not i read dude i gotta tell you i read so much creepypasta <laughs> in the last like three days just an outrageous amount of creepypasta i spent hours and hours Bro. just trying to read this stuff um did you eat pasta while you were creeping heck online? no <laughs> i ain't creeping online with pasta that would make me a creepy pasta i ain't about that hey, well so anyway back to the got, story maybe you gotta be one to understand them you know maybe you gotta, you gotta pasta creeping some pasta to yeah. No. Yeah. Well, so long story short, TLDR of this kid, his brother gets taken by the police, and the bullies come back that very same day where they burn Jeff's face oh, with alcohol and bleach, which is why his skin is like super white the way that it is. Um, and then he goes, he like he becomes mentally ill, you know, psychically snaps his brain. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that'll do it. And yeah, he, he goes on a killing spree. Like it's, it, it says here, Jeff then goes on to kill parents and brother. Oh, yeah. and Jeff. then goes on a less discriminating killing spree, which it would seem continues to yeah, this day. Cut it out, man. So, cut it out, Jeff. Yeah. It got a dark, cut it like out. I said, a lot of this creepy pasta <laughs> just gets, outrageously dark um well i mean honestly uh, the weight behind it like when you're telling me this it, it has that like like you know that that sinking feeling in my gut you know what i mean which is i think why people enjoy it because it's it's a kind of like its own genre of horror you know like if yeah you were, yeah you know, exactly play a horror game or watch a scary movie um it's like that but i don't i don't know i don't want to call it fan fiction but it's like it's definitely a way to consume that kind of story. Uh, right. Kind of, kind of a, it's like an indie version of it, you know, like anybody could come yeah. to pasta. Yeah. So I like that. That's cool. Um, so this character, I one fun fact about this character before we move on. Uh, he has a strange, uh, at least at the time, there was a fan base of fangirls thinking he was super attractive. What? He was, no. I'm not kidding. There's a no, lot of fan no. art out there of Jeff the Killer 
No and there was way. like a fangirl page, and oh my yeah. gosh! I mean, he's it's definitely, it's he's, fascinating like, in the most grotesque way. He's creepy, but he's also like not the worst looking uh, creepy pasta out there because he looks kind he looks kind of human, and he honestly looks kind of happy. I know he's you know he's a psycho, but like I don't know. I I can I can see it, but man, uh, yeah, definitely. I gotta be honest. I'm it's gonna call that. I, I was not expecting that's it. Kind of weird. That's that's pretty weird to me. I don't I, like I'm, that. I'm not saying but. it's not weird. I'm just saying I can I can understand why it exists. But uh, uh, yeah, I did not, I I did not expect thing. it. I did not expect it. Yeah. Okay. So you did fangirls. get the point on that one. He's popular, bro. He's got he's got those fangirls. That's nuts. Okay. He probably has more fangirls than we do. Not that I lost them. <laughs> And yeah, where's our fangirl page, huh? <laughs> uh, okay, are you ready for round three? Yeah, I am ready. Who creeped in your pasta? Where round three. Creepo past. Bro, what is this? Whale Lord? Who is that? <laughs> he looks like a space... I just wanted to give you some... He looks like a space blimp or a jet ski or something. What is this? I just wanted to give you some time to digest the image. <laughs> Did, are those things on the left his eyes? What is this? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, what, what do you got? So, what do got? Is this A, Ed the Caver? B, Jed the Caver? Jed the Caver? B, Ed the Caver? Edge? Or Ed? What was the first one? Ted. Ted, okay. <laughs> is it Ted, Jed, Ed, or is it D, Davy the KV? What? Davy the KV? Yeah. Oh, man, you're making this real hard for me. <laughs> uh, I, really, I really wanted to set the tone with Slenderman because I knew you would be familiar with that one, and I just oh, wanted to, like, but you did really three, throw you in the deep end. That rhymed. <laughs> It's like, I, I, I feel like the last one's bait, right? The last one's like, oh, it doesn't rhyme. So it's clearly that one. Because Ed the Caver, Ted, Ted the Caver, feels a lot like uh, the guy we just covered. What was his name? Jeff the Killer? Yeah, Jeff the Killer. And then Ed the Caver. You know, it's like, it's fault. there's a pattern here. Um, Davy the Cavey. That doesn't even make sense. So is it Ned, Ted, or Ed? That's the question so let's lower it to a 50 50 so i'm going to use my my uh hint my second one your second hint yes it is confirmed to not be davy the kv okay well that confirmed my suspicions but it's now it's still a three <laughs> choice question oh, okay well um ed ned or ted how do i even <sighs> We're going Ned. We're going Ned. N E D locking it in. Okay. I'm gonna assume that you're talking about Jed because oh. Ned isn't an option. Oh, okay. Um but <laughs> I'm just gonna assume... <laughs> Um so Jed the caver is the one you locked in on. Yes. This is in fact Don't tell me I got it right. This is Ted the Caver. Ted? Oh, dude, what is It that? is Ted. Dude, did you do those things on the left on purpose? They looked like eyes. Yeah, I did. Oh my gosh, bro. Who is Wait, this no, guy? actually, the little pixels? No. So yeah. Ted the Caver. Dude. It was so funny doing oh this image because it just, oh, as soon as I blacked it out, I'm like, <laughs> dude, it's like a bean. Like, there's no way to even. Yeah. I, I'm just expecting some kind of like ancient mechanical beast or something that was crazy so for context in <laughs> in this image he's in a cave and he's like down in the oh, crevice of a cave that's so narrow that this is the only part of his body you can yeah see. we need to describe these for our audio listeners i haven't been describing them um, oh yeah well okay jeff the killer was a super white face leech person with no nose you know what Slender Man looks like, big, tall, white. Yeah, yeah, Slender Man. So it, it was like a. I kind of mentioned it. He looked like he was in a suit, and he had a regular, like, looking round head with a big hand outstretched, like he was going to grab somebody. And then, yeah, Jeff was. Uh, it was like a black blob with really creepy looking eyes in the silhouette. Like his eyes were like staring into your soul, but then 
the actual picture like it was like you said it was the michael jackson picture so super pale skin and then it was like morphed to be really creepy um so uh-huh. this one is uh-huh. it just looks like a regular old guy wearing a <laughs> This is a regular dude in a white t-shirt wearing uh, like a handkerchief on his head, like a bandana, and he's laying down, looking all sussy. (laughs) Sussy. (laughs) So we're not going to get into this guy too much, frankly, because I didn't read his creepypasta. Okay. Because I opened the page and said estimated read time is 86 minutes. What? For I did did not have time for that. Yeah, for Ted the Caver. The Caver. I'll just... Yeah, the caver. So the what I do know about this, I know two things about this. First thing is it takes place in a cave, and it's kind of more about how scary the cave was and their experiences inside the cave with like ghosts and and paranormal things and scary stuff. It's more to do with that than Ted specifically. Ted the caver is the protagonist that's writing about it. Oh. Um. Okay, so it's about so his, this his is, experiences, pretty much? Yes. Okay. So this creepypasta was, uh, it came out in a series of emails to an email listing uh, that grew in size over time, because this came out in 2001, where the internet was still extremely new. Interesting. Um, so that's that's why it's so long. Is it's just a series of emails? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, I, I was like just like, I, press, you know. Yeah, seriously. So <laughs> anyway, that's Ted the Caver. I had to put him here because he was the original. <laughs> yeah, I'm very, pasta. I'm very interested. It's <laughs> like <laughs> like this guy's looking all weird, bro. <laughs> okay, we gotta we gotta move on. Okay. All right. So this I'm, is I got two points. I missed the third one. We got five yeah. left. Okay. Okay. Here we go. This is Creep 4 of Who Creeped in Your Pasta. Creep 4. And it's four people. It's a silhouette of four figures. They all have different shapes. So, they, oh, they could be vampires. It looks like they have hoods up. Okay. So, like, it it, it does look like they have popped collars and decent hair? (laughs) Question mark. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm so, looking for the options. Is this A, the rake? The what? B, the rake. The, the rake. The gardening tool. Every time you say that, I'm like, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah, the rake. Is it B, the sleep bomb? Sleep is it s- bomb? Sleep? Sleep, as in like go to sleep. Okay, sleep bomb. Is it C, the Russian sleep experiment? Okay, that's another sleep thing. Or is it D, Wendigo? Wendigo? What is that? I don't know what Wendigo is. <laughs> um, okay, what was the first one again? The Rake. The Rake. Okay, it's not the Rake. I can, I can cancel that one out. This is four guys. So the sleep experiment sounds right to me because the sleep bomb doesn't sound like a... Like a person but cre- i guess creepy pasta we established from the last one could be anything that's just the title of it so i want to go with the russian sleep experiment because i don't know what wendigo is i have no idea so i'm going with the russian sleep experiment okay there were two sleep things it's more likely that's my reasoning let me type that out okay all right this is in fact, the Russian sleep experiment. Let's go, dude. I don't know. I just knew. And it is four guys, but they are not vampires. They are wearing like they're all wearing different kinds of gas masks and look very suspicious and creepy. But they're, they're, it, this picture is grayscale. So in a way, they also look like stone, but that's probably not intentional. Um, no, it's, it's not. It's, it's so... just supposed to indicate it's an old picture. Yes. So So the Russian sleep experiment is, I will preface this, this is one of the ones that I actually read all the way through uh, because it was intriguing. Um, This, all of these, I, disclaimer right now, right here, right now, these are all fake. So if you're ever feeling scared about these, they're fake. They're not real. Okay. Every single one of these is a work of fiction. 
So the Russian sleep experiment was a a fictional story of an experiment of Russians taking uh, POWs of World War II and putting them into a bunker and putting gas in the bunker to ensure that these people stayed awake. And the goal was to keep them to stay awake for 30 days straight without sleeping. Oh, man. Wait, why did they want to do that? Like, what, what was their goal here? To just see how long people could stay awake? World War II is notorious for a series of human testing hitherto undreamt yeah, of. Like that, it, that it was true. a like time the whole where Captain America thing was like World War II related to. Yeah, you know, everyone like... was was testing on each other. If you've ever gone down <laughs> rabbit holes, Dude, it's... everyone oh, was testing man. on each other. Yeah, let's. So uh, the yeah. the results of the experiment are that the TLDR of it. If you really want read these we'll probably i will probably put the links in the description i i have the links so i'll just send them to you logan yeah okay sounds um, good i'll put them in check the description yeah and if you want to read about sleep studies and mr jeffrey mr ned well this know. sleep study goes awry very quickly because three or four days in the the i think there were like five people who were supposed to be in there five prisoners of war and as time goes by, they go more and more insane. They end up killing one of them. Uh, and then one of them screams themselves like until their vocal box is destroyed permanently. Like they just don't wow. have a voice ever again. Wow. It gets to a point where they take them out because like at some point their organs were coming out of their body because what? they like tore themselves open. Oh my God. Once again, extremely graphic, kind of a trigger warning. Sorry guys. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, I they mean, just... it's, it's creepy pasta. Uh, yeah. Like if you're watching this, you should know what to expect. Right. So anyway, basically the reason that was so intriguing to me was by the end of it, they were testing these people and trying to put them back in to the, to the experiment after they kind of saved their life. And one of them, they were, they started being asked questions and their only responses were put me back on the gas. I don't want to sleep. And at one point there was like a dialogue of one of the people, almost creatures at this point saying, we are the madness that you hide from every time you go to sleep. It's so like sleeplessness or like, Hysteria slash insanity is almost like this monster that is inside people that yeah. we go to sleep to hide from those monsters so they can't find us kind of thing. Interesting. So it was a really interesting way to yeah. kind of play it, on the whole sleep motif. Yeah, it has that eeriness um, to it, right? Where it's like, you know, everyone has... There's a, there's a bit of stuff about sleep that feels mysterious, you know? Because it's like a big part of your life where you're like unconscious and everybody has to do it and where do you go when you're sleeping? You know, it's like people can write so many stories to fill in that gap. And I feel like this is a cool way to expand on that. And especially like putting it in a world war two setting makes it feel believable, right? It makes it feel like this is something that could have happened. Um, yeah, that's super cool. And it, it, right real quick, I wanted to point out the the first guy, uh, the way he looks reminds me of ratchet and clank reminds me of clank. And the second guy looks like he looks just like the iron giant, bro. I like can't unsee it now. He's just like, he's got the face of the Iron Giant. The, yeah, the third funny. guy looks like a gaster blaster kind of from Undertale. And then the fourth guy, I'm not too sure. It's, he's kind of got like a spearhead kind of shape going on. Um, or nah, maybe, maybe, maybe we can say he's the pyro from TF2 and just give them all video game characters. But um, <laughs> yeah, for anyone, okay. for anyone yeah. watching the YouTube video, uh, you can, <laughs> you can see if I'm right on that or not. Um, okay. But, Round yeah. five. We gotta, we gotta keep going. You're okay. you are nailing this. Yes. Okay. I just need to get um, one more. Yes, you do. Okay. Here we go. Who creeped in your pasta? Number five. Oh, dude, I know this one. I know this one. You do know this one? Yeah, because I'm a freaking Nintendo fan, bro. You can't get this one past me. It's Ben Drowned from Madura's Mask, bro. You can't get this one past me. I can see those little elf ears poking out. Which okay. for everyone well, at home, it looks like a like a really rough, edgy silhouette, like kind of like low polygonal from back in the day. With like you can see two little things poking out of the side. I think this is Ben Drowned from Madura's Mask. 
Uh, that's my final answer. <laughs> I'm locking it okay. in. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. You are correct. It is Ben yeah, Brown. Yeah, dude. I didn't think you were going to put him in here, but he definitely is a creepypasta. Uh, well, so uh, I guess that does complete the game for you. Um, dude, you technically did win it. But well, do you want to go into... Yeah, of course. Uh, you want to, you seem, because I didn't get to study this one too much. I, my other choices were Link had a stroke, the rake, <laughs> and the man eater. You just keep throwing the rake in there. Dude, Link had a stroke is actually pretty dang funny. Um, I, so, I, don't, I don't know yeah, if I give know us, too give much us a about TLDR this. Of the I, um, I, I'm not entirely sure because Majora's Mask, in and of itself, if you don't know what Majora's Mask is, it's the sequel to Ocarina of Time for Zelda, Legend of Zelda. And in that game, Link is looking, it's after the game. So he's, he's, he goes back to being a kid and he's, he's looking for his fairy. So this is something that's really sad. Not to get too deep into Zelda lore, but uh, Navi, the fairy that everybody knows from Ocarina of Time, it's like, hey, listen, whatever. She, uh, after Ocarina of Time, leaves Link because this is something that... Uh, isn't really stated out in the open, but it, the fairies in Zelda and like a fairies in general, right? When they fulfill their purpose, they, they die because they fulfilled their purpose. Like this is something I think you'll see in other forms of media too, where like a fairy will have a task to like show somebody something or heal somebody. And after they're done, they disappear. So after the quest is over in Ocarina of Time, Navi or Navi, however you pronounce it, she goes off and disappears or dies, right? And so in Majora's Mask, Link goes to look for this fairy and ends up lost in the Lost Woods. And it's, it's, not, de like, it's not determined 100% if the place he goes to is real. So Termina is the place in Majora's Mask that Link goes to. But people don't know if this is a dream world. They don't know if it's real or if Link died. And this is like his weird limbo afterlife situation. So the game's already like really eerie. Um, and the game's even drawn with like really dark shadows and everything. So in the game, you can play a song that makes a statue of you. It's like a clone of you that is like a statue. And this, the Ben Drowned resembles that statue and it's super creepy looking. So I imagine people made creepy pastas based off of this statue and just how eerie the game is. Um, and I think it's supposed to be kind of like Link after he died or something. I think that's essentially the the gist of it is it's kind of like a weird like link died and is like haunting you in the afterlife or something but i'm honestly not too sure about the details of the creepypasta itself but that that would be the origin story not to not to go too far into it okay well yeah you seem to know at least more than what i was able to gather it's just it's kind of like a one based off a of video game um, yeah, there's plenty of uh, videos on YouTube, especially back when creepypastas were relevant, that kind of were like deep diving into like the mysteries of been drowned and all the, yeah, it was definitely part of the creepypasta community, but you know, it bled into the Zelda, so it like got really popular. Gotcha. Okay, well, uh, we're still going to play these last ones out. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, uh, let's do it. What in all this work? I got to go for the high score, okay. bro. Yeah, at this point. Okay. This is Ooh. creep number six. Okay. Who creeped I, in your pasta? I don't know what this is. It, it's a, it looks like a landscape. That's my first uh, instinct is it's like, imagine like a, a canyon with like a giant pillarish mountain in the middle. Um, but it, honestly, it could be anything. So, yeah, okay. Give me your options. Give me your options. Is this A, the Rakes Village? Dude, the rake's not gonna be in. At this point, I'm, is I'm giving e, up on the rake. <laughs> Yoshi's ugly duckling. What? Is it C spirits? Spirits? Or is it D Yeah, spirits, just the spirits, yeah. Okay. All right. Or is it D Lavender Town Syndrome? Lavender Town Syndrome? <sighs> I mean, this is a Pokemon themed style you have going on here. Um, Lavender Town Syndrome. That's the one I want to go with because the Pokemon Tower is the only thing that makes sense here. Like the Rake's Secret Village. 
doesn't look like a village. So I'm and it I don't I think you're throwing the rake in to throw me off. I don't think he's in here at all. Uh what were the other ones? Um we had Yoshi's Spirits. Oh, spirits. That one's super vague. And then Yoshi's like child or whatever. Yoshi's ugly duckling. Dude, uh, okay. I I could be wrong here, but I'm gonna go Lavender Town because I, I think the tower indicates Lavender Town. Which would fall under Creepy Okay. That is uh yeah. That is correct. Yeah, dude. It is Lavender Town Syndrome. Did you put Nintendo in here and I know exactly what it is. Yeah, I definitely went wrong when I started putting Nintendo. <laughs> dude, I'm um, loving it. I mean it goes to show my knowledge, no. right? Yeah, yeah. I, I I am surprised at how well you are performing in this. Um so Lavender Town Syndrome, fun fact about it. I actually read this right when it came out. This oh, was the dang. very first okay. creepy pasta I had ever come across. I think didn't I, even know what creepy pasta was. I might know I read a little this. bit. So I am interested. I want you to tell me about it first and then I'll I'll chip in. Okay. We're a little short in time, so I'll go fast. Um Lavender Town Syndrome is a kind of series of stories, sort of, or at least an article on the stories of many children being affected by specific beats or tones that were played in the original Lavender Town oh, theme. Oh, okay. I do know this, but it's not the one I was thinking about. And and it drove several children very mad to do lots of very bad things that we will not discuss here. But <laughs> it, oh man, it drove them to like hysteria and and madness and stuff like that. So yeah, they weren't getting sleep. They were hanging out with Jeff. Like everything was just going wrong, bro. Everything was going very very wrong. Um, it was. It's kind of weird because this one's not necessarily disproven, but it's not really proven either. So it's just kind of like a thing mm, that exists in right. a weird way. Right, like, uh, like like Mothman. I mean, I guess Mothman was disproved, but like for a while he wasn't. So right, right, yeah. Just this kind of a situation where like there might be some evidence towards it. There might be some evidence against right. it. Well, so we don't really have the cases. There's at least two hundred. If I remember correctly, it's cases. not just Lavender Town. There was like actually like a Pokemon Black or a Pokemon like Lavender Edition that was released for the Game Boy. Like, I don't think this is real, but this is part of the creepypasta where like it was that version of the game that was cursed. Um, where, yes, like, yes, that, that is kids, exactly correct. Yeah, the kids that played that one are the ones that got messed up, um, which is, you know, Lavender Town's got that eerie vibe. A lot of kids play it. Like reading this on the internet, people resonate with it a lot because everyone's been there. So. Right. Well, so when I read this as a teenager i think i was at least 12 or 13 man this scared the crap out of me because i played it i as i was reading it it would play it was like play this music and it played the lavender town music yeah and somewhere down the line they did start like the music started to put some lower frequency yeah. so it made it sound like that i was hearing the frequency that was talking about in the story yeah and man dude i did not sleep that whole night. it was so Bro. hard to get to sleep after reading this it scared the crap out of me it was a that was a scary experience dude some of the scariest things i've experienced are from nes games or like snes games like older games it's kind of crazy how much you can get out of like songs and kind of like filling in the gaps i think maybe that's one one of the reasons why the older games can have some of that scariness is because it's not so clear, right? Like, it's not so clear what the game's trying to convey. And, like, you know, like you said with the music, I don't know what it is, man. NES music can get really creepy because you can have those, like, siren-y kind of sounds, too. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, oof, it's, like, it's good stuff. for someone, As someone who likes horror games and uh, likes kind of being scared uh, when I play games and stuff, like, it, it's good stuff. Yeah, so that's that was that. Um, okay, so we got two left. If yeah, we got two left. So okay. here's number seven. Who yeah, creeped I'll, in my pasta? Number seven. I'll try and keep this one brief. Okay, 
it lo it's, a, it's a silhouette, but this one looks more on the anime side. Like it looks like it, this isn't a real photo. It looks hand drawn. Um, it looks like they're by a bed. So it's like, you know, like those old school beds where it's got like the round metal frame with the bars. I, that's what it looks like they're by, but I honestly couldn't tell you what they're by. They could be connected since it's a silhouette. They could be connected through like straws or something, but I don't think so. Straws. <laughs> like, like what if it's like some weird organ connection thing? Like they all are. Yeah. yeah no, it run with it. Cord. I like this creativity. I, I don't think that's what it is, but it could be is what I'm saying. I don't no, know. No, lean it's... into it. Double down. No, no I, like I, need, where you're going. I need to know who these guys are. <laughs> so one of them has hair that's like kind of messy. The one in the middle has like hair that's like more contained, kind of like Zenitsu or like uh, Justin Bieber or something. Um, sorry, not to not to slander Zenitsu, but um, the last one look. I don't know why he's giving me Sans energy, but he's he looks bald. That's about it for the the picture. Uh, <laughs> maybe they're okay. like scientists or something. I don't know. So here's the options. Is it a the expressionless? Is it mm. E, the rake? The rake. Is it C, <laughs> who touched my spaghetti? Oh my, there's no way. Or is it D, the black phone? The black phone. So I don't get phone energy from these guys. And maybe if you said the rakes, I would, but it's, it's three people. It's, it can't be the rake if it's three people. You do not get me with that one. Uh, so whatever the first one was, what was it called? The, the something, the, uh, expressionless, the expressionless. That's what I'm going with. It's going to be humans with no expression, kind of like slender man. It's going to look really creepy. Okay. Either is, you're is doing little... extremely good or I'm really bad at this, <laughs> but it is in fact <laughs> the expressionless. Well, for me, it was between the expressionless and the, the last one. The, the black phone, the black like, phone. So the black phone is actually a horror movie. That's where I got that from. So. Oh, okay. So <laughs> they, th now that he's showing me the picture, they do have an expression, uh, but it definitely doesn't look human. Like it looks very like abnormal, almost like half animal, half alien, half human. But I don't know. The other two people that are besides the middle people are, they, they're facing away. So you can't see their face, but um yeah tell me, so, tell me tell me about them yeah the the expressionless came out 2013 and it she it's about a lady it's a, actually a very short story it's like a two maybe one minute read to be honest all it is is some lady in that gets taken to a hospital and her she has a kitten clamped in her draw um Wait, say that again. Yeah, a kitten, like a, a like a clamped in her a dead jaw. cat. Yes, like, like she bit the cat and killed it, kind of thing. Yes. Okay. Sort of. I see. So she has no expression, and like the doctors themselves are trying to sedate her and and put her into the hospital, and she's able to. She kind of like is totally expressionless, like abnormally so. Shows no kind of expression whatsoever. And as they're trying to sedate her, she like turns, she like shows her teeth to a couple of Ooh, doctors. Yeah. Her teeth are more like nails or like long, sharp spikes. Oh, man. Um, Dude, and then she nails like, is a, that's a good description to be creepy because nails just sounds unsettling. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So she kills everyone around her and the last person to be alive. Uh, asks what she is and she responds with i am god and then walks what? away <laughs> bro you can't just drop that and leave after eating a cat off the street bro that's that's whack that's what the story says <laughs> and it's it's just a i think what happens with this one what gets popularity whatsoever it is a, one of the more well-known ones in the community to me, it seems like it's just a really short story that's really well written, very masterfully okay, written. Okay, I see. Because to me, on the surface, it seems more like a cryptid story where it's like, this could have actually happened and we're not sure. Kind of like The Smiling Man, where it's like, super weird stuff's going on here and they're really abnormal and they could exist, but they probably don't, you know? Um, right. 
but yeah so yeah it, it's just a situation of like really well written in such a short period of time because right. like it, 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 the caver is 86 minute read right, whereas I, this one's like one minute still captures the same feeling oh yeah okay so yeah it, it seems like you should just like that one should be read like it's that's where all of the scariness really comes from is like the delivery of it yeah yeah okay okay last one last one baby i've only missed one so far Bam. and it was actually really hard the one i missed was super hard what wait is this just a block <laughs> is this just a brick is this actually the picture kai this is actually the picture oh yes oh my gosh so yeah it, it just it looks like a big black square like it's a rectangle so it's long but it, there's no nothing to make out other than a square so uh I don't okay know, is it doodle bob <laughs> is no <laughs> is this a the rake oh my gosh is this b doors is this c hello neighbor hello neighbor or d disturbia disturbia okay so i know what hello neighbor is but again it's hard to gauge with this picture and i don't know what disturbia is and i don't know was it fours for the second one like t-h-o-r doors doors d-o-o-r-s it could be doors okay i think you okay i think you are putting doors here to trick me because it's a rectangle it looks like a door i think it's the rake because you've been leading me along this whole time the rake has to be the last one i'm locking in my answer this means that the bait no it wasn't not the rake. no <laughs> the shot dude hard. oh my i picked this creepy pasta just because it's a quick read quick <laughs> read um <laughs> And it's just the title was Doors. But like, that's not really that threatening. But. I, I'm interested, though. That's the thing. Is I'm actually interested as well. So, I think I, you really so, didn't put the rake in? You really did me like nope, that? Nope, that was an entire bait. Oh, it was a creepypasta. I will say this. The rake is a creepypasta. It's just not one that I put in here. It was just a huge <laughs> bait, and it worked. I'm so glad it worked. Okay. Well, you got me. Okay. <laughs> Done okay. being got. But I still got six points, and I never did use my my mulligan, so I'm I'm a little. Proud it's true, of it. yeah. Maybe I should have used it just to be, a, but I was so sure it was the rake, dude. I had to lock it in. Okay. Anyways, tell me about doors. What is what is doors? So doors is a little bit more. It's it's kind of like a short novelette, I guess. Uh, kind of a quick read. It's about a kid and his family. Mostly the kid is the character. But it was, it's, they move into a new house and there's like something going on specifically with the doors where they're kind of like portals to monsters, I think. I kind of mm. only got to skim this one. Like monsters uh, maybe it, gone wrong? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the case in point of it is to like not lock, open your door for any reason. Bro, wait. Stuff like that. I know this is, a, this is a little unrelated, but have you ever, like, as a kid, would you ever like be walking like up the stairs from the basement or something, or like you turn off the light in the hallway and have to like go to your room, but you're like, it feels like something's chasing you. Has that ever yes, happened to you? I have felt that before. Dude. I actually think that this is kind of based off of that. Yeah, that's why I bring it up. It's it reminds me of that where it's like, you know, like I, I know there are some people. I think I used to be this way, but I don't really care anymore. But as a kid, like if I saw a door that was open, I'd want to close it, um, especially if it was like late at night or if it was dark in the room. Um, just for, like, and you know, there are some people out there that like like to have all the lights on in the house, you know, because like the darkness is scary. <laughs> it can be scary sometimes. Um, but yeah, is, is, is that it? is there any more to it, or is it just like you know the doors might lead to places you don't want? You know, and if you leave them open, people will come in and get you. Oh, uh, not necessarily. At least, at least not what I've read. It's, I mean, there's probably some specific monster in it. I was after by the time I got to doors, I had already been reading creepy pasta for like four hours. And I was, <laughs> I was just like Dude, so done hours. with it. I didn't. 
that, that's so much i didn't want to read bro. a single extra yeah dude i that's was so many was that's so overdosed. many creepy carbs bro dude i was so full on creepy carbs i was about to explode <laughs> I was about to and explode. I definitely got creeped in my pasta. So yeah. now, now you forearmed is forewarned. Wait, no, it's the other way around. But you know what I'm saying? Yes. You know about no. creepy pastas now. You know <laughs> to, to maybe read them or not read them at your own discretion. We are not responsible for any any kind of reading that you end up doing on the subject. Um, yes. To uh, just uh, kind of finish out. I was just gonna say, be be a safe reader. Uh, go ahead. Read safe, kids. You know, like read safe. <laughs> don't don't read drive. Don't don't, don't drink, and, drink and, and read. read. Don't drink well, and read creepy no, pasta. It's, a, I guess. <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> so, on the concept of just to finish this out, real quick, the whole thing about why this kind of ended was because for two reasons. Number one, was one of the reasons that kind of ended the creepypasta thing. And number two, it was strangely a genre that was really targeted towards children. Children were the ones that were getting a hold of these stories, which is honestly kind of concerning to me personally. It was yeah. an age where like you people moderate what was on the internet. No one cared. You could access anything in any because no one knew how to moderate it yet. The primary readers of all oh, stuff man. were children and read, and I'm 25 years old, you know? Dude, Kai, so, you've been, you've been kind of turning into a robot. Uh, so it's, it's almost like you're turning into like a, the cyber glitch creepypasta or something. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I am not a robot. What are you talking about? Oh, mm. Um. Mm. oh well, so I was going to say with the, the whole Slender Man thing, I just think that this is important to talk about because it is something that we're getting a, just a little bit more serious on this subject. If you're just here for the game, like, I don't know, skip this, but it's important to recognize, at least in my mind, that the stuff is not for children. It's definitely not. And there was a situation with the Slender Man thing where, oh. and this was a real case where two or three, I think it was three girls, um, got lost in the sauce a little bit and really decided that Slender Man was a very real and very scary thing. And they ended up um, trigger warning everyone. They, they ended up stabbing one of the girls several, several times. And she went to the hospital. And the remaining two girls are currently doing 20 and 40 years in a psych ward. Wow. So, yeah, it's it's huge tragedy. It was huge. It was a big problem. And after that, um, parents were a lot, obviously a lot more moderate story sure, yeah. of what their mm -hmm. kids experienced on the internet. Yeah. And the other thing that, so it was that tragedy and the when children got a hold of this creepy pasta one of the reasons that horror is really good is because it has master writers writing it they know what tension is they know how to make it scary when kids started to get a hold of it they would write their own creepy pastas on mm. things like jeff the killer and stuff like right. that but they they didn't know they didn't have the experience or articulation that an expert would well, and so the creepy pasta yeah. became more of like a fan fiction horror right kind of kids realm where the stories weren't really that compelling it was just that it was just kind of a space there but with the tragedy and all the kids writing the quality of existing creepypasta went way down but also the amount of people that consumed creepypasta went way down as well and creepypasta itself actually started to evolve into what's now known as the scp Foundation. Ah, okay. So that's really cool. Because the thing, the thing I was gonna say is that there is something to be said about like horror as a genre because it is very well known that like horror should not be consumed by children. And but like that, if you go to see a movie or or a book or play a game, like there's rating systems for a reason that kind of like moderate that. And you know, cr but because the you know internet was like the wild west back in the day, 
like all of the big platforms and places people would go to consume this kind of content, they weren't moderated. You know, anybody could go on there. Um, you know, so it's like it, we'd have an issue if, you know, all of our, if we didn't have a rating system for games and anybody could go to the store and, you know, pick up the newest, uh, like Resident Evil. And, you know, you know, there's GTA, you know, the whole discussion with that and whether or not, like, you should sell GTA to kids at GameStop and stuff. And, like, you know, they're not allowed to legally and junk. But, um, yeah, I just feel like that's one of the reasons why this probably got out of hand. But that is a very, like, real thing. But I, I did want to say, though, um, maybe to bring it back to more lightheartedness. Um, sure, I have, yeah. I have, and maybe I can redeem myself because I said I didn't have any stories at the beginning. I have a creepypasta, actually, that me and my friends created. <laughs> so Really? Yeah, okay. If you want to hear it real quick. I, I'm not going to take too much time. Um, I do want to hear it, but we are pretty much almost out of time. Uh, maybe let's save it for uh, another video. Okay. Where where you just tell it to me because we our train is coming to a to a quick stop. We're kind of kind of close here. Yeah, yeah, we gotta um, go. But hey, everybody, thank you for watching. If you liked, or if you liked it, then like it. You know, subscribe if you want more. And if you like this video, we did a cryptid video not too long ago, and so we'll put that up on screen. We'll we'll link it. Whatever. Uh, go check out the cryptid video. And for the love of everything. Don't let something creep in your pasta. It's not good for your pasta or for you. What Everyone involved Snickers? is sad. What if it's a Snickers, would you let a Snickers creep in your pasta? Can you make a Snickers creepy pasta of you're not yourself and you're hungry? <laughs> the like Snickers. it's like the the, the, the Snickers. The little candy bar that laughs as he crawls into your noodles. And then eventually the, the Russian eat. sleep experiment, but for <laughs> hunger instead of <laughs> sleep. If you eat the Snicker, you will never stop laughing. Unless... You ought to know how I got this hungry. Oh my gosh. Anyways, uh, see you guys. We gotta go. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.